Recording has started. Attendees should be welcomed in. Give it a couple minutes. Hopefully the Kelly has joined us. Yeah, in my participant list, I just see there's four. Oh, there we go. They're starting yep. to populate. Welcome, everyone. We will get started in another 30 seconds as other people join. Okay. So hopefully we start to get better weather. Yeah. <laughs> No more rain. <laughs> Thank you everyone uh, for joining this to today's uh, State College Bike Chat. Uh, I just wanna go over a little bit of the technology. I do wanna note that this is being recorded and it will be published both on the borough's YouTube page and shared throughout uh, throughout all of our shared uh, social media channels at a later date. Um, to participate and ask questions during today's meeting, please utilize the raise hand feature. Um, that feature is generally down at the bottom. Depending on the version of Zoom that you have, it might be under the participants window or the emotes window as well. Uh, it all depends on the version. They just recently came out with an update and I wanted to make everyone aware of that. We also do have chat and q and I will be monitoring that from my end and helping Jasmine and Trish out, Trish out with those um, moving forward. And again, if you have any questions throughout it, uh, please raise your hand uh, and uh, Trish and Jasmine will call on you for today's session. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to Jasmine who will be uh, kicking this off. You are muted, Jasmine. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. We wanted to thank you for coming out today to be a part of this community conversation. The goal for today is to educate you on some of the facilities and resources available um, for bikers in State College, as well as give you an overview um, of some of the regional resources as well. Who are we? My name is Jasmine Fields. I'm the Sustainability Program Officer at the Borough of State College. I've been living in State College since 2011, so 10 years a community member. To give you a brief background, excuse me, I served as the Environmental AmeriCorps member from 2018 to 2020 for the borough. Um, in 2020, I was promoted to the Sustainability Program Assistant. And as of last week, I've been promoted to the Sustainability Program Officer at the borough. I serve as the chair of the Center Region Bicycle Advisory um, Committee, as well as the borough's in-house Sustainability Committee. I serve on the e-board of Community Diversity Group, and I also assist the borough with its MS4 stormwater management needs. Um, so I wear many hats in the community, but one goal, and that's building a sustainable community um, for the residents that we serve. Trish? And I'm Trish Me. So I've been in the community for almost 27 years and I am a senior transportation planner for the Center Regional Planning Agency. So what that means is I get to work on a lot of different types of transportation projects, but I spe specialize in bike and pedestrian planning. So um, when it comes to education, encouragement, facility development and planning, that's one of the, those are the main goals that I work on right now. And just so everyone understands, so the Center Region is comprised of six municipalities of which State College Borough is one, and one of the things that we do regionally is transportation planning. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Jasmine. Thank you. Okay, so I wanted to start off today by highlighting why, why biking is important to the borough. Um, so we look at sustainability with three prongs. That's environmental, social, and fiscal. I wanted to read this statement here um, from the borough. Um, the borough aims to use best practices to create lasting environmental, economic, societal, and fiscal vitality as a part of State College's overall mission to enhance our residents' quality of life. 
So sustainable transportation um, is embedded in um, multiple commitments that the borough have has some of which are listed on this screen here. In 2007, Resolution 944 declared the borough a climate protection community. This endorsed the U.S. Mayor's Climate Agreement. It called for the development of a climate action and mitigation plan to be presented to borough council. There's specific metrics and timetables associated with our greenhouse gas emissions goals. It essentially formally holds the borough accountable um, for reaching um, our, climate protection, our climate protection goals. Um, from that resolution, the manager created an in-house sustainability committee, which consists of um, one member of each department. We work together to help the borough to achieve its sustainability goals. In 2018, this committee published the 2022 Sustainability Plan, which has a section specifically dedicated to sustainable transportation, much of which our biking goals are included in. I wanted to highlight that, that as a part of sustainability, um, we are interested in improving the health and wellness of our residents. So not only looking at the environmental benefits of biking, but also um, how it can you know, make our residents healthier. Two programs that we're involved in that also show our commitment to sustainable transportation is the Pencil, um, Sustainable Pennsylvania certification. The borough is a platinum level community. And then finally, the Bicycle Friendly America program, which I'll elaborate more on the next slide. The borough is um, considered a gold bicycle friendly business. This um, program is a part of the League of American Bicyclists Bicycle Friendly America program. The program recognizes employers for their efforts to encourage a more welcoming atmosphere for bicycling employees, customers, and the community. The four areas that are highlighted in this recognition program are encouragement, education, engineering, and evaluation and planning. You can find out more information on the League of American Bicyclists website, um, more about that bicycle friendly business program. In regards to encouragement and accommodations for employees, we do have a bike fleet av available for employees um, to use during the work day. Um, another feature that the borough has is secure bike parking. I'll elaborate a little bit more about our um, engineering and infrastructure that we have available later on in the slides. Um, we also develop educational programs like this one to educate both the borough employees as well as residents. Um, we partner often with um, different entities to host these programs. We have incentive programs associated with the events that we hold. Also, the borough has a wellness committee. And when borough employees partake in physical activity, they do get a wellness chip. And at the end of each year, we have a wellness fair where people are able to come together. There's raffle prize drawings, et cetera. So, um, you know, recognizing employees' efforts to create a healthier lifestyle for themselves. Our um, IDs serve as bus passes. So borough employees are able to get around on the CATA bus system for free. So if you were to ride your bike to work and the weather were to get inclement, um, you can rest assured that you'd be able to get home for free via, via one of the buses if um, that's feasible for you. And then we also have the company car fleet. So if you were to bike to work, but you needed to go to a meeting that required you to drive, you don't have to worry about having your own car at work, we have that available for employees. So um, these are different ways that we encourage and accommodate um, those employees that choose to cycle to work. The State College Borough Bike Fleet. Um, this fleet really helps us to work towards our goal of reducing our carbon emissions, as well as increasing the physical activity of our employees throughout the day. We currently have four bikes available. Um, employees sign in and sign out um, on a sheet on the public, at the Public work, Works Department. Um, we do have a sheet that records the number of trips taken, the hours spent riding, riding the miles ridden, and the purpose of the trip. So that 
that we can better understand what the bikes are being used for and also in the future use that data to um, translate how much emissions we're saving by biking instead of using um, the vehicles. And then finally, one thing to highlight is that the company Bike Fleet, you are covered under the company's insurance, the same insurance that covers you if you were using a borough vehicle. Um, so if you were to get injured while on the bike, um, that's something that we definitely let employees know so that they're aware that they're covered um, while they're at work. Um, in regards to our bicycle friendly business, I did want to highlight some of the engineering. Um, the engineering department has assisted greatly with helping us to build our infrastructure to accommodate the needs of employees and the community as a whole. Um, we're located within a quarter mile of low traffic, low speed roads, Allen Street. Um, there's a 25 mile speed limit on there, which makes people feel safer when the um, speed limit is lower. There are different share the roads, um, share, share roads and bike lanes located within a quarter mile of the job. Um, also public transit stations were around the corner from the Cata bus station, um, talking more, you know, what I talked about earlier with the connectivity, if you were to need to get around um, to a further distance, you um, do have a public transit station as well as multiple bus stops downtown. And then public car sharing, there is a Hertz um, car rental station at Beaver Garage, um, two blocks away from work. So again, if somebody were to um, bike to work and they needed to do something on emergency, there's multiple ways that they'd be able to get to where they need to be. Secure bike parking, we do have five, five bike racks around the building. Um, we worked with Center Bike to do a bike rack donation program. Um, and also I'll bring this up as well, working with Trish at Center Region Planning Agency to um, evaluate where all of the bike um, racks are located in the center region, look for areas where we could put new bike racks, get community input, um, help to reduce barriers by having these racks donated to people. So, um, you know, they can have safe, secure parking for people if they come to their establishments. Um, and then finally, bike repair stations. This image was created by um, Center Region Planning Agency. Thank you for that. But it shows the different um, bike repair stations in the center region. So if you were to have an issue um, with your bike, you can pump your tire and um, do different maintenance on it um, fairly close to downtown. I wanted to highlight um, this bicycle ambassador program, which is in in the process of being developed for the borough. Um, the intent is to have a group of community members who work to get more people on bikes and educate our community. Two prongs that are important to us regarding biking is educational outreach and community involvement. And this program really formalizes that um, commitment and engagement from the borough. We would have league certified instructors trained through the League of American Bicyclists um, to teach safety classes and educate um, residents at community events. We'd require them to report infrastructure problems and of course um, ask them to lead by example. So to show people how to safely ride when they're out riding on their own. Um, we intend to create an online platform with safety information and different resources available, continue to host public classes. And also um, we have a desire to strengthen the Share the Road campaign. So teaching pedestrians, motorists, and cyclists the safe way. Um, as you know, State College has a lot of one lane roads, um, showing people how to work together to maintain safety um, while they're on the road. And then community outreach, the um, group of volunteers would be attending community events, helping us to lead group rides, just really expanding the reach of the borough um, and what we're able to do regarding biking. Finally, I wanted to highlight our um, advocacy and involvement in the community. Borough employees regularly attend community meetings, conferences, and training, trainings focused on biking. We attend the National Bike Summit every year, which pulls people from all across the nation who are experts or in different fields of transportation to talk about what's working in their communities, things they've learned throughout the year. We had a conference this past year and um, we talked a lot about COVID and how that changed our engagement, um, got a lot of great ideas and were able to build off of the conversations that were had at that um, summit. 
Um, we attend the Center Region Bicycle Advisory Committee meetings, as well as Center Bike meetings. Um, and then as far as the Center Region goes, we are involved in the Climate Action and Adaptation Technical Advisory Group, as well as the Climate Action and Sustainability Committee, which really um, is focusing on greenhouse gas emissions and sustainable development of the Center Region. Um, we wouldn't be where we are today without our partners, Center Bike, Center Moves, and Penn State Transportation Services uh, have helped us tremendously over the years to be where we are now. And then also Center Region Planning Agency. We have Trish here today to talk more about our Bike Month events, as well as regional facilities that are available to um, you all throughout the, throughout the year. Thank you. I see I'm muted. Thanks, Jasmine, for the great introduction. So um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the facilities that we currently have on the ground, as well as those that are planned for the future. And I'll be reviewing some just basic safety information because we always like to get the word out there so that people are riding safely. We want people to have great, enjoyable trips on bikes. So the map that you see here is our regional bike, net bike network map. If you'd like a copy of it, you can go to our website, um, the Center Regional Council of Government site. We have a specific page dedicated to bikes and it'll print as an 11 by 17, which is pretty small. We realize that, um, but you can use, it's a PDF. So you can zoom in and out and get some basic information off of it. What we try to put on here are just the types of facilities that we call out specifically from a bike perspective. So the red paths are shared use paths which are generally separated from the road, bikes and peds, pedestrians mix on them. We also have blue lines on the map, which are bike lanes, which are dedicated infrastructure within the roadway itself. So if you've driven around State College or been here for some time, you know that there's places where we have the, the lane for a car, a white line, and then dedicated space next to the curb for bikes. Those are bike lanes. We also have yellow marks on here, which are bike routes. So they are places which we have signed and the borough is where most of the routes currently are right now where you know we've looked at point a point b destinations origins and we're designating this as a great route to use to get from a to b so you'll see them connecting into the university and they're generally designated with a green sign uh, with a bike on it for a bike route and sometimes they have companion um, painting on the roadway which is basically a bike with some arrows next to it. So this map is available. Um, we also have, I'll just put a big shout out for that one of the bicycle PA touring routes, which are statewide designations, goes through the center region. And that is shown on green in here. So if you are into touring from a cross country perspective, or you wanna go on long rides on what we have identified as some good routes to use from a, um, perspective of we tried to minimize the hills, we tried to cut down on the uh, volume of traffic and look for places that are attractive for bikes to ride. If you're trying to do long distances, check out Bicycle PA Route G, which is shown in green. Now, this the other thing that I wanted to point out, if a paper map doesn't work for you, we also have a digital bike map online. So if you do go to the COG webpage, and search for bikes. We have a little icon for bicycle facilities. You'll find an interactive GIS bike map. And what's really cool about this is it provides you the tools you need to find where you are and where you're going. And then you can look at what facilities connect you. So this right here is just the basic map that appears when you enter into this to the digital GIS format you can actually turn on ortho photos or aerial photos so you could actually see your house and you can see your destinations and you can zoom in and out, turn other features on. It not only shows the shared use paths, the bike lanes and the bike routes, it also shows the locations of the bike repair stations that Jasmine mentioned. Um, they're shown as a little uh, orange, orangish yellow dot with a wrench in them. So that's good to know. We also called out the actual school locations on the map and uh, open space and parks are shown. So they're pretty prominent on there as green. So you can probably see that. But when you do zoom in, you'll get even more data. So where we have already collected the bike rack locations in the downtown, 
when you zoom into this map, they'll become little green dots. It's just when you're panned out at a certain level, we can't show all the data, it'll be so cluttered you won't be able to read it. And as Jasmine said, we're working on a project now to not only collect data within State College Borough, but to do it for the rest of the region as well, because we know end of trip facilities are extremely important when you're a cyclist. You'll be less inclined to ride, especially if you have a bike that's worth a certain value. You wanna lock it in a safe location. You wanna be close to a doorway when you go to a particular business or office. And we're hoping that over time we can keep collecting data, improving uh, data locations for bike racks, improving the racks that are out there and getting even more racks so that it's easier for people to make the decision to bike. So the one thing that I wanted to mention is that in 2015, the Center Region Council of Governments actually adopted a regional bike plan. And it was done in house. There was a considerable amount of public involvement. We put a survey out, we held public meetings, and it went through our Transportation and Land Use Committee at COG, which is comprised of an elected official from each of the center region municipalities, as well as a representative from Penn State University. And you'll see when you look at the map of State College Borough, so if you're not familiar with what State College Borough looks like, um, the area that's called out on the map is within the borough. Um, and what we did with the mapping is that we showed the existing facilities. So you'll see those, you know, the, the blue, the red, and the yellowish orange color on there to represent existing. And then it also has some dashed black lines. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the two seg. There's three segments that are actually shown here. And Jasmine is actually controlling the slideshow. So hopefully she can use a pointer to orient you. So the one in the lower left-hand corner of the map, which is a, dashed line is actually a potential bike route that would connect the Orchard Park bikeway along Whitehall Road, uh, along Blue Course Drive to Whitehall Road. So we have bike lanes on Whitehall Road, we have a regional shared use path, and there is a proposed regional park across Whitehall Road. So this has been a priority for, for some time because one of the things we want to do is connect where people live to where recreation facilities are. Now there is a sidewalk that runs along Blue Course Drive, but we've always had the thought that we'd like to upgrade it to make it a safer facility for families making that connection and especially small children. Another connection, and this one's really exciting. So it's right above, um, it's, it's up towards Penn State University and it's called the Gill, we called it at one point the Gill Street Connector. So this small area, towards, it's right almost in the middle of the borough, Jasmine. So um, I don't know if you can put your pointer on there or find it, but there's a tiny dash line. It's only a couple of dots. And that actually will make a connection from a borough neighborhood into the West Campus of Penn State. So we're really excited about this project. The borough actually went out and obtained PennDOT multimodal transportation funds. So it's a great way to build projects is to find outside state and federal funding sources to do it. And that project's been on the books for a while now, but it is under construction or the construction contract was awarded. And you can be looking forward to a ribbon cutting as soon as it's open, because I'm sure that the borough wants to celebrate getting this really important connection. And that was through a partnership with State College Borough and Penn State University. And if you go out to the farther reaches, out towards the mall along Route 26, you'll see a slight dashed line as well near the uh, University Drive College Avenue intersection. And that particular connection would get us from Center Furnace Mansion and provide an off Route 26, which is a five lane cross section in some locations because of the center turn lane and a high volume roadway. So. Our thoughts were there's an old road bed there right by the, the furnace mansion. Um, and we could potentially use that to connect into a road net way network at Penn, on Penn State's property. So those were the three proposed projects that were on the books before we did the study. And now you see a lot of yellow on the map. And these are corridors that the public as well as members of the Transportation and Land Use Committee thought were critical that we evaluate. Now, they are, most of them are on state roads, which makes it a little bit more difficult because the borough doesn't control those roadways and there's different design standards along them. But we wanted to show these critical connections on the map. And the reason is, is that PennDOT now has a program called PennDOT Connects. So every time they come in to do a project, 
they are going to look to see if there is demand or plant facilities along those roadways. And so we wanted to be sure that we were starting to show that these particular alignments are pretty important from a bike perspective. And so as development comes in, we can say to PennDOT or even to developers, look, this is something that we've looked at on our bike plan. So they're not easy connections. We've done all the easy ones. That's what we, we like to say. So things are a little bit more difficult now with some of these, particularly where we have very limited right of way, but they are documented or on the books. And many people have talked a lot about the North Atherton Street corridor. And we know that riding on that segment of roadway is just, it's not, some people may do it, but the majority by far will not. So we're looking at designated bike routes that are signed on parallel networks, our street networks alongside there. And that's why you see this, that wide swath. That's like, a, I don't know, it's a, a, a darker type of yellow there as well. So I just wanted to point out that there is planning, there is planning that has been done. And as projects proceed, we're adding um, new projects as are trying to develop facilities when we can. So Jasmine, if you can go to the next slide. Jasmine's computer just froze. So uh, I don't know if you have the slides available on your end, Trish. Uh, uh, you can take over sharing the, the Yeah, let me pull it up and let's see if we can make it work. Technology is great, right? Uh, yep. <laughs> supposed to make our lives easier. Yeah, definitely. So I apologize. Um, the pointer made my screen freeze, froze, and I couldn't point to the things you were talking about. So and that's okay. I think I have it now. Thank you. So can everybody see a big flyer that says May's Bike Month 2021 Bike Events now? Yep, working on our end. Okay, so we're good. And I have now control of my slides, so I don't have to have you pro pro proceed for me, Jasmine. So that's good. So we just wanted to do a shout out. And one of the reasons that we do this presentation, and I think this is the third or fourth consecutive year that we've done it, is that we just want to acknowledge that nationally May is Bike Month. And here in the center region, we're trying to do as much as we can to promote it, get people on bikes, get them to start riding so they continue to ride. And this little flyer is really close to my heart because it's one of the partnerships that we've built over the years. So you notice that we have a lot of CATA on there. So a little CATA bus, their CATA logo. They have agreed to actually place these flyers on, their, on the bus. There's a small slot behind the driver and they put them on their buses and it's been for probably six years now. Uh, every May, they help us promote Bike Month. And it's really about making those connections. And CATA has been so great because all of our buses are currently equipped with bike racks. So if you want to do a one-way ride, or like Jasmine said, if it rains and you only want to, you don't want to ride home and you're close to a bus stop, you can put your bike on the bus and ride in the bus. So we like to just try to reach out to regional partners and it's all about mobility for us. So these alternative means of transportation are really important to us and we're really excited that we have that partnership. Let me just make sure, okay. So I just wanted to point one thing out. I, I know this is a little bit off the topic about what's happening in the borough, but I just wanna say, if you are riding in the borough, please lock your bike. So we'll just say that, you know, cable locks are good and I don't, you know, they're not as secure as a U-lock. They're more effective, more difficult to steal a bike. Uh, bike locks can range from very low to very high. It really depends on the level of security you want. And they're actually rated on how tough they are to uh, get through or crack to get the bike. I'll just say also, do more than lock your front wheel, because if you do, what could happen is what's in that right hand, lower right hand photo there, that with quick releases on bikes nowadays, all you have to do is pop it off and they have your frame and your componentry, which is the most valuable part of the bike. So anywhere you go, even though it's state college, we say lock your bike. Now, the other thing that's extremely important, and we like to put the safety, safety messaging out there, is that you know that in Pennsylvania, you're required after, in, when it's dark out, so between dusk and dawn, to have a white headlamp that's visible at least 500 feet, a rear red reflector that's visible at least 500 feet, 
and amber reflectors on each side of your bike. So sometimes they're contained on the pedal itself or on the wheel, the amber ones. But we say to be even more visible, use a flashing red light because it actually increases your visibility and ride with your lights on during the day because those types of things actually matter. And you know that many vehicles now have daytime running lights that run all the time. And it's an upgrade in safety to do that. But it's also the law to use those lights after dark. So think about that. When you leave, will you need lights? The one thing that you really need to check. And always be visible. So this is just a great photo to show that these people have gone beyond lights. They are very visible from the clothing that they're wearing as well. And it's just important because you want people to see you. Now, we also wanna do just a little bit of review of the rules of the road and paths as well. So in Pennsylvania, there's something called the four foot pass law. So you in a vehicle, if you're driving a vehicle, when you are passing a vehicle, you must provide four feet of distance when passing a bike that's riding within the roadway. Now the little green, orangish, or green, yellowish sticker that we have there, we have this available at our office. I think Jasmine has some as well. So if you're interested in one of those for your vehicle, we can actually mail it to you in COVID times, or you know maybe you'll see us at a future event and you can get a couple or one of those for your car as well. But it's just important for everybody to know this. So we try to pass this messaging on, not only to bikes, but it's important that cars know that. And when we talk about partnerships, we also work with PennDOT, State College Borough, Ferguson Township, and Penn State University to get flashing variable message boards. So those are the boards that you see around construction zones to alert you of changing patterns or road closures. Well, we actually put those boards up during bike month to pass on the four foot pass messaging. So be looking for those during bike to work week, which it starts, I believe, on May 17th and will run throughout the week. In some locations, they might flash at other times as well. So we're really excited again that we have these partners that are willing to get the safety messaging out there. And we hope that you know when new people come to our community, if you're driving in the community a lot, you generally know these rules. Our intent is to try to get the word out to everyone that's driving in our community. Now, a little known law that some may not know about, you can only use one ear bud in the state of Pennsylvania while riding and it must be for communication. So no listening to music. The reason is, is that you need to be able to hear what's going on around you because you are technically operating a vehicle because bikes are vehicles according to the Pennsylvania code. So tickets are written for this. So just keep that in mind when you're out there. And I think we're all taught about using our hand signals when we're small, uh, when we're small children learning to bike, and then sometimes we forget about it as we become adults. So it really, you know, you just, it's pretty easy to remember. You're turning left, put your hand out to the left. You're stopping, put your hand down. You're turning to the right, raise it or point to the right. So please use your signals and be safe when you're riding. We also have a lot of shared use paths in the region, and those are the ones that were designated as red on the map. And a number of years ago, we had some concerns about conflicts, that bikes were traveling quickly, that pedestrians were in the way when they were riding. So you'll see these uniform shared the path signs throughout the region to just reinforce that if you're under 12, you must wear a helmet in the state of Pennsylvania. You have to use lights when it's dark. And a little known law by some is that when you're passing on those shared use paths that are designated for bikes and pedestrians, you must use an audible warning when passing. So either as you're approaching, say, passing on your left or ring your bell or just say, hey, I'm back here. The idea is that bikes are very quiet and sometimes we forget that. And when you come up at a certain speed behind a pedestrian, for some reason, everyone seems to step left and that would be right within your path. So just remember, just warn pedestrians um, that you're coming so that we can create a safer condition on our shared use paths. And for those of you that might be wondering about e-bikes in the state of Pennsylvania and in the center region, yes, they are legal in PA. A number of years ago, legislation was passed and then that started the conversation, should we allow them on our shared use paths? And the reason that the area has that, that, that decision to make 
is that many of them were built using federal funds. So they're owned and operated though by local entities such as municipalities. And they decided unanimously that we need to allow e-bikes to operate on those paths. And I will knock on wood when I say it, and I'm doing it right now, that everyone has behaved well. So that as long as everyone is co-mingling and being safe, we won't have a problem with this. And we wanna encourage e-bike use because it allows people with physical limitations to bike. It allows people who maybe live quite a distance from work to commute by bike. It allows people who don't like the sweat not to sweat as much. And so those are really important things if we're trying to get people to switch over from a car to a bike for a transportation perspective. So right now, our shared use paths are open to e-bikes that are legal in Pennsylvania. And I say that it is here because that is not the case everywhere. In some locations, shared use paths, e-bikes have been banned because there have been a number of incidents on them. So I hope the center region continues to keep up uh, the good work and everyone does what they need to do to keep those e-bikes out there. Now, one of the things I wanted to highlight, and we've only got an hour plan, so that's why we're moving through this quickly and we wanna leave time for um, questions at the end, is I just wanted to highlight some of the bike activities that we have planned for the month of May for Bike Month. As Jasmine said, we spend a lot of time developing these to try to encourage people to ride. And we have really great partners that help us by providing prizes as well. And I will say that if you like our flyers, you can thank Steve Arnold in our office. He, he is just great at taking content and turning it into something very spectacular and attractive. So the first one I'll highlight is our family bike scavenger hunt. So this is the third that we've done. So Jasmine's probably chuckling while I say this. We, this year we're like, well, what are we going to do? The first year we went with different park locations and then we went with find some bike repair stations. So every year we do it, it's getting a little more difficult to figure out which locations, but we want one in each of the six center region municipalities. We would encourage you to do it solo or as a family and go find some of these unique features. We're not saying you have to ride from your house because we know for some that's not possible, but many of them are located in parks. So park in the park, go for a ride, find the feature, take a photo, pick one you like, send it to us, and you could qualify to win a $50 Weiss gift card thanks to Center Moves. Another um, family type of activity that we plan, because a lot of these are because we are in a, we went into a virtual world last year and we're still in that socially distant somewhat virtual world. So we also came up with Bike Bingo. So the League of American Bicyclists had a template on their website. We filled it with things that were pertinent to our area. The cool thing is you don't have to do five rides. We have given you the opportunity to do a ride, watch a video, attend a meeting, just do something a little bit different. And so this also, these are great prizes as well. Thanks to Center Bike, we're offering three $25 gift cards. Um, or we're offering, I believe it's one of three. Yeah, there's three $25 gift cards. So you have three shots to win it if you do it. So get out there and look at the bingo card and see what you'd like to do. And you don't have to be the first one. So I'll just say, typically with bingo, the first one to let us know they have bingo wins, but in this case, we take everyone who qualifies and randomly select the winners. Now, also, we wanted to keep people's brains active as well, and that's how we came up with the word search. And in the past, the word search was a little easier. This time, we thought, let's make it difficult, and we really expanded the number of letters in the network, and I will say it's difficult. <laughs> so we set aside some time for this one if you decide to do it. And we also thought it would be kind of cool to do bike infrastructure because there's words on there that people might not be familiar with. And we're hoping that they're inquisitive and they Google them and they find out what a runnel is and uh, just another way to qualify to win a great prize. So a purple lizard map that's being donated by Center Bike, And it's good for a rainy day. That's what I'll say. We also wanted to encourage activity at our area eating establishments. So several years ago, or two years, I think it was three years ago, and 2019 was the first one. I believe Matt Cox is on the line right now. He's the president of Center Bike. He came up with this great idea. What if we encourage people to ride to particular restaurants on a given day, and they'd receive a 10% discount? 
So the first year we did this, we worked with restaurants, we tailored graphics specifically to them, we promoted their establishment on those days, but then COVID came. And so we didn't feel right asking restaurants to give 10% discounts. So instead we said, just visit any eating establishment in Center County, send us a picture of your receipt, yourself and your bike to a designated email. And then the great part is, is that the, the restaurants don't have to give the discount and Center Bike and, and State College Borough are offering the prizes. So Center Bike has put a $50 local bike shop gift card up and State College Borough purchased a $50 downtown improvement district gift card. So all you have to do is go out and eat and then send us your receipts. And you can enter as many times as you want, which increase your odds of winning. So we hope that people will get out there and bike and munch, support our area eating establishments and have a chance to win one of these great prizes. So there is something called National Bike to Work Day and many of you may have heard about it, but we decided that National Bike to Work Day could limit things. So in 2019, we decided that we were going to do Bike Anywhere Fridays. And Spring Bike Anywhere Friday just happens to be National Bike to Work Day. So we've opened it up a little bit to allow you to ride anywhere. And I, when I say around the parking lot, down the block, I mean it. So any mileage counts in the center region on Friday, May 21st. And it's a great prize. It's a $50 freestyle gift card. It's donated by Center Bike to encourage people to participate. We do this event four times a year. So winter, spring, summer, and fall. So look for more in the future. And we're always focusing on gift cards from local area businesses as well. So it's really easy to do. And why we like it is it helps us get data as far as how many people are participating in this. Now we know there's hundreds more people who actually ride on that day that don't know about this particular uh, program and registration, but we're trying to get the word out to people so that every year we get more people that participate. Now we also do other types of educational programs. So this year we're doing bike chats, not only in State College Borough, but in Patton and Ferguson Township as well. So if you're interested in facilities in those areas, you can sign up, register for those events as well. They are not next week, but the week after is when they'll be. And then we ask, actually do some classes. And our, own, our one in-person class this year is Mountain Biking 101, which will be held this Saturday. We partner with Center Region Parks and Rec and an incredible instructor of Community Mountain Biking Association. His name is Ryan Leach. I always say it and I will say it again, when we do post-class surveys, he gets the highest rating out of any instructor we've, I've ever worked with on any bike programming. So if you're interested in learning about my, mountain biking, I would encourage you to check that out. We always do a Biking 101 class in the center region, and we've added to our lineup the last couple of years, Bike Commuting 101. The Biking 101, for some reason, we always get people who sign up. We offer it, I believe, three times a year. And our numbers have been really strong this year. I think more people are, than ever are encouraged to start biking. And we just love that. Um, and then I'll round it out with, this is the great catch-all. So Push the Pedal is a partnership with Center Moves. And Center Moves, just so you know, you've heard me mention their name a couple times. They're the non Nonprofit, part of the nonprofit arm of Mount Whitney Medical Center, and they are there to get people moving. So start doing things that you haven't done before, be more physically active, eat better, mental health, physical health. And we had pushed the pedal a couple of years, and our idea was that people would log their miles, and then we would see how far the center region could ride. Could we ride to the moon and back? Could we ride around the world? Like what was our progress each week? And what we learned is people do not like to log their miles. It's just, the, it's just one of those things. It's another thing that you need to do. So we came up with a new format last year, but we decided to put a hold on it. And now we're bringing it forward this year. And all you need to do is complete 10 biking adventures during bike month. And we've made it really easy. You can do anything that we've already scheduled. That's a big event. So if you're going to do it, Print this off, check off State College Borough Bike Chat because you already have one under your belt. You could also actually just go out and do your own bike adventures. So do 10 rides. That's another way to qualify. And what makes this a really good uh, program is that 
it's a great prize. So it's a hundred dollar gift card to a local bike shop or you could win one of four one day pool passes donated by CRPR. So it's a great way for us to find out which programs are working, which ones people are involved in and just to get people moving as well. So this is really the one that we're most excited this year about because it brings everything together. And then of course, I'll just say, if you're interested in advocacy or finding out more about what's happening, there are center bike and center regional bicycle advisory committee meetings, which are still virtual. So it's easy to get there, no contact as well. So you can check those out. And I, I do believe too that, you know, we want to thank all of our partners because we've partnered with so many great entities, including the municipalities. But I just wanted to say that, you know, the information is on our website. There's links on the borough's website as well. And we just want to get people moving and, and using the facilities that we have that are out there. So with that, I'll just end in saying that you can contact, contact us directly if you have questions, but I think we do have a little bit of time for questions if anybody has any. So I'll turn it back over to you, Jasmine and Douglas. Do you guys want me to go to a particular slide or do you just want me to stop sharing? Um, maybe just leave the last one up. Okay. Okay, so Douglas, are you gonna read off the questions to us? We actually just had one question and okay. it was a, for a link for the interactive bike map, which I did put in the chat. Uh, uh, it was on the Center Region Council of Governments uh, planning website if you're looking there and all the, like Trish said, all of the resources, um, information about today's or this month's events, community partners is all located on that webpage, uh, right. but I put a direct link directly to the interactive bike map as well. Yeah, we love talking about bikes, Jasmine and I. So feel free to call us or email us. We're available. Um, if if anyone, uh, Ezra Nains has raised his hand, I'm going to allow him to unmute at the moment. Hi, everybody. Ezra here. Uh, Trish and Jasmine, thank you. I, I have to say, I think I know why we have platinum and gold status for our bike ability. It's because of the people involved in leading our bike program. So thank you both so much. Mm -hmm. This was really great. Um, I, you know, I love biking with my family. We actually biked to school today to Radio Park. And I, you know, there, I just had a couple of questions for you both and so much information here, actually, the maps and everything. Um, on the four foot rule, this is something that, you know, I talk a lot about with my wife, because when you bike with your children, if you do have to ride on a street, um, that rule is becomes very important. I mean, it's always very important. And not everybody, not all drivers are aware of that. And at times, if you're out, you know, riding a country road, you might encounter someone who is not familiar with that rule and feels that you're actually not supposed to be there. I, you know, and I love that you said, Trish, that there are going to be some signs sort of advertising mm -hmm. that rule, is there a possibility to have sort of actual sort of road signage is start to include that in a more broad sense? Because it'd be great if it's like, here's your speed limit. And by the way, there's a four foot rule. You know, that would be something that might be helpful out there. I love the comment. And I wish I could tell you that we could put signs up that say that, but along state and local and federally owned roads or US routes, there's there's a there's ordinate well there's there's regulations it's called the manual of uniform traffic control devices so they only permit certain types of signs and there is a sign that doesn't say four feet but it says about bikes may may use full lane and that may be one that we could talk about using as well so it sends the same message and one of the reasons that I think there isn't a three or a four foot um, sign out there is we in Pennsylvania are one of the few states that have a four foot pass requirement. Many only require three. So the idea is that the expectation to the driver is the same. So that whether you're driving in Pennsylvania or Ohio, it's not unexpected to you. And so we could, Jasmine and I can talk about that. We can talk to some of the public works directors to see if possibly we could look at locations where we put that because it is true, bikes may use full lane. Mm -hmm. It's it's part of what Pennsylvania, when you start to, when people say, how many miles of bike facilities are there? In reality, it's all of the roadways yeah. with the exception of the interstates, 
plus the bike facilities because roads are bike facilities. Great answer. Thank you, Trish. And if mm -hmm. I just had one part two to that question, is it okay if I if I ask that? I don't want to take anybody else's chance to speak, but um, I, bike connections, interconnectedness is another really important topic. And I love that, Trish, you had been kind enough to spend some time with me going over that bike plan. But um, I also, you know, there are projects in the works, the Harvest Fields Trail mm -hmm. Network, um, the Musser Gap Connection, there's a lot of things happening with Friends of Rothrock there. And some of those opportunities to sort of, you know, move from, you know, bike pads into sort of more of that mountain or trail environment, which are really exciting. Are there, um, is there planning around making those connections even down towards Harvest Fields and Bullsburg, you know, more accessible to a broader range of people? Is that something in the bigger vision? Yeah, we have talked about some of those really cr critical connections down in the Bullsburg area and a number of potential alternatives have been thrown around. And I think when we actually talked one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. Harris Township actually did a road diet study or feasibility mm -hmm. study for a section of South Atherton Street where they're potentially considering on-lane protected bike facilities to make part of that connection. So mm -hmm. I think over time we see there is a considerable amount of support from Harris Township officials for making sure that bikes are able to travel in that area. So I think we will see things happening and I can even touch base with the Harris Township planner to see if there's any new developments there. But the Harvest Fields project, you know, I wish we had enough time to talk about every project in the yeah, region. And I'm really yeah. glad that you mentioned yeah. that because yeah. that is beautiful in the fact that it is completely grassroots. Yeah. So whereas yeah. they did work with Harris Township, their fundraising is coming from a private perspective and they're out there just knocking it out of the park. They are. They yeah, are. they're finding ways to, to create a family-friendly trail training facility, as well as I'll say trail playground. That's what I like yeah. to think of it as. So and great. so we have a responsibility to find a way to get people there on bikes, not just with cars. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks, Trish. And thanks, Jasmine. Lots of great info on the borough there. Really appreciate it. Thank you both so much. Thanks for your questions. Sure. We also have another question submitted through the Q&A, semi-related to bikes. Is there any chance that Pennsylvania might start enforcing speeding via radar? One of the biggest uh, biking bummers in State College is traffic, but there doesn't appear to be any enforcement at all of speeding. I can take the first part of that question. I do know that that legislation has been announced a couple times over the past uh, few years. However, they've never really moved forward for uh, local police departments to be able to utilize radar. Um, but uh, I will call on Jasmine and Trish if they have any other additional information. Correct. Trish. There have been multiple attempts to bring radar into the realm of local municipal police departments, and it has failed. What I would say is if this is one of those things where it's really important for people to contact their state legislators, let them know how you feel about this issue, because it just hasn't moved. It's sat there. It's been I've been here since 1994, and I will tell you that this has been an item of discussion since I came here. So from a speed perspective, radar would be very helpful to local police forces. I'm sorry we don't have a better answer to that one. I don't see any additional questions up at the moment. We do have uh, six more minutes. Uh, Ezra, I see you have your hand up again. I'm going to unmute. Apologies, I needed to lower my hand. I was very <laughs> happy with my answers. Thank you all. <laughs> but we used up 30 seconds chatting like this, so that was yeah, good. Right. Um, <laughs> seriously. So I think we could just say that um, Thanks for joining us. It's always great to have the opportunity to talk to people. And it also, Jasmine and I talked about this, you know, should we hold it if there's only one person that signs up in the, or immediately we both said, yes, we need to do it because our intent was to record the session so we can make it available to people that couldn't make it at this time. So I don't know, Jasmine, if you have other thoughts, but we're Just really that, happy that you were able yeah. to be here. Thanks. 
Thanks everybody for coming. And just to remind people, Trish, um, that the events that you shared are on, you know, the the called website and also there's links available on the borough website about the different programs that we have available as well um and you know as trish said thanks again for for coming out today and, and as a reminder for everyone uh this this will be posted later this week early next week on both uh both the uh, borough's uh, social media accounts as well as others that share it so uh please be on the lookout and share it with your family and friends that uh maybe are interested in learning more about biking in state college Thank and you. i'll just say i hope that we see a lot of your names come through as registrants on some of our our programs that we're putting out there. Thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.